Could it be the last dance for the Denver Broncos wide receiver group? After Sean Payton squash him trade rumors, 2023 could be an interesting year. We're going to talk about that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. For a man of few words, he had a lot to say over the weekend. Sean Payton has squashed some trade rumors. How does it impact the Denver Broncos? Welcome into a brand new episode. Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. To get the latest episode as soon as it's made available, make sure you follow or subscribe for free on YouTube or your favorite podcasting providers. I'm your host as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter from Mile High Sports. Joined alongside as always by my co-host Sarah Bettinger, site expert predominantlyorange.com. Sarah, that was the rumble heard around the world this past week with trade rumors surrounding Jerry Judy. And, you know, we were like, okay, it could happen. Yesterday's episode of the show, you are like, you know what, just let's get it over with. If it's going to happen, let's just get it over so we don't have to suffer anymore. Well, Sean Payton, he must have heard you because he came out in an interview with NFL Network's Tom Pelissero, and he said, hey, we're not trading them. And I found it to be very interesting for him to come outright and discuss it, uh, especially with Tom Pellicero, who we all know is an insider. Good luck, charm of this podcast, Cody. It just continues on, doesn't it? Uh, Every time we finish recording, something happens out there. And after I got done comparing the Jerry Judy trade rumors to throwing up, you know, and by the way, go back and listen to that comparison. You don't need me to relive it here. But Right after that, I mean, it was it was maybe minutes, if not just just over an hour after that, we got the interview with Sean Payton uh, and, and the quote that he had about not trading Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton, where he just said, we're not trading those two. You know, he, he was pretty definitive in what he said. A lot of times, you know, you see general managers or coaches be like, he's not on the trade block right now. Uh, we're not talking about that kind of trade right now. We're not... There's always like the right now language, right? Or it's the uh, he's he's not he's not on the trade block, which is like, well, you know, you could still make an offer, but he's not on the trade block. Uh, this seems pretty definitive. We're not trading those two guys. So I don't know. I'm interested to see everybody type it in the comments. How do you interpret Sean Payton's comments here? Do you think there's something left for interpretation or do you think it's pretty definitive that, hey, the Broncos are just going to roll with these guys for another season? Well, to me, I felt it was also interesting. We all know that Sean Payton, he doesn't say anything normally, right? He's usually a radio silent type of guy, as we've known. All the Broncos moves, I mean, they've even added more coaches. They brought coaches out of retirement to finalize their staff just this past week. But Sean Payton, he moves in silence. And he doesn't necessarily have to give any creed to any of these rumors, right? But he even said it, and it's very interesting because I always think it's a great reminder to the folks out there. You never know who reads or who listens to your stuff. I can tell you that. I've had people come up to me and say, hey, I listened to your show the other day. Great job. And they're like, you know, I like how you talked about this. I'm talking about people within the organization. People listen. People follow the tea leaves a little bit. They want to see what people are saying. And for Sean Payton, he's seen all the rumors coming out. Okay, Jerry, Judy, Cortland Sutton, the Broncos are looking to trade both these guys. It require a first, it requires a second round pick in order to offset them. And he even mentioned like, you know, hey, I see and I read things and it's like, we're, no, we're not trading those guys. He said, you know, I know that there was some conversation that was brought up because of some interest in teams that called Cortland. He even mentioned George Payton. He said, George's job is to answer the phone and say, you know, hey, we're not trading these guys. You know, teams are always going to call. And, and that's one thing I do think that needs to be pointed out here. Every year, and you never always, you, you never hear about it, but every year a team will call and they'll ask about the team's best player. Like, can you imagine how many teams have called the Los Angeles Rams over the years and said, hey, Aaron Donald, you're going to move the guy. They haven't done that, right? But the, the phone conversations happen and it's either, you know, hey, we're going to hang up. It's like, no, we're not interested in training. Thanks for calling. Boom. Bam. There you go. Uh, for Sean Payton to come out publicly and talk about this is not what we're normally used to seeing with Sean Payton and how he operates. 
But I like it though, right? It, it kind of reminds me just to your point, Cody, about him watching and listening and reading stuff. Remember earlier in the off season when there were some select people really complaining about how long it was taking him to assemble his staff. And he goes on Twitter and he's like, Hey, you know, just so you know, uh, we've only got this many hires left or we've already made this many hires and you just haven't basically, you just don't know about it. Yeah. We'll uh, let you know when we want you out to the Yeah. We'll let you know. We'll let you know. I, I love it. I love that he's reading stuff. I love that he's engaged. I love that people within the organization listen to this podcast and I love that, you know, all that kind of stuff is taken into account, whether or not they use our opinions. I, I don't really care. I think it's it's fun for us to just know that, hey, we're being heard in that sort of way in the fans as well. A lot of this stuff gets seen on Twitter, which I think is kind of it, it leads me to my next very interesting point here, Cody, because there was a report that came out right in conjunction with this. Of course, Sean Payton said what he said. But then Mike Kliss came out and said that the Broncos basically, they weren't trading, they were never trading Judy for less than a first, and they were never trading Cortland Sutton for less than a second. Well, we got to pause there on the Cortland Sutton topic for a second because what has been the the word out there on Twitter or what has been talked discussed in your mentions? I know for sure what's been discussed in mine about Cortland Sutton's value being from what this is what people are saying. This is not what I've said. I've been saying the opposite. A lot of people have been telling me that Cortland Sutton was only worth a day three draft pick at best, maybe a couple of day three draft picks if you're lucky, Not certainly not a day two pick, certainly not a second round pick based on his salary, based on his production in recent years. I think the tape tells a different story with Cortland Sutton than people are really leading themselves to believe. But obviously, you know, I, I don't. You can say this is a PR spin if you want. There's always moving the goalposts to to be right in an argument, right? But I don't know where where do you come down on this? I think the Cortland Sutton piece of this news is just as intriguing as the Judy piece. Yeah, and I think it is, and I, I think the conversation really stems from recency, right? You know, recently, what has the Broncos' offense looked like? Hasn't looked good. Recently, how has Cortland Sutton's overall production been? It hasn't been great, right? But it, it's you factor in. There's other circumstances that impact. Maybe what we're talking about, right? With Cortland. I mean, think about it. When guys went down with injury, when Ju Judy went down with his injury late in the season, the ankle injury, what had happened? Teams focused everything towards covering Cortland, bracket covering him. And you have to rely on guys like Kendall Hinton and Jalen Virgil, which, you know, I'm not taking shots. It's not a bad thing, but it's like you don't have your best options out there on the field, which makes it harder for a guy to go out there and produce. Not to mention just the overall offensive ineptitude that we saw from Nathaniel Hackett in this scheme in particular. This is a great opportunity for Peyton to come out here and say, you know what, we're going to unleash this new offense it may take some time for it to fully gel, for it to fully get to where it needs to be, but we want to showcase why these guys are valuable. And here's also another thing. It could change, right? As I have mentioned, like if Denver were to look at trading any guy, look at the trade deadline to do just that. Not do it right now because Denver simply, they don't have guys at that position with the injuries to KJ, with you know Tim coming off of an injury. You want to bring him along nice, so you don't want to force him to do too much in, in a short time frame. And you have Jerry Judy. You know, right? If you're going to trade any of these guys, like why would you do that now considering that the Broncos offense and Russell Wilson need weapons around him? Let's see. And that obviously is a, a talking point that's going to continue on on today's episode. Locked on Broncos. Tim Patrick threw out a little bit of a Instagram last dance punch there with a picture of him and all the Broncos wide receivers. Could it be the last dance? But for who? You'll get that on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends over there at FanDuel. And the tournament is heating up, and there is no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel America's number one sportsbook. That's because right now, FanDuel is giving a new uh, FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and sign up today to claim your no-sweat wet first bet then you can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the net all in an app that's safe secure and super easy to use so don't miss your shot at a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars when you join FanDuel today just go to fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up make every moment more with FanDuel. could it be the last dance for the denver broncos wide receiver group heading into 2023 Cortland sutton jerry judy kj handler tim patrick could this be it? 
for that group together. Thank you so much, Broncos Country, for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day in your favorite audio podcasting platform or whether you watch on YouTube. We appreciate you so much for listening. Make sure you interact in the comment section if you're watching on YouTube with other members in Broncos Country. Share your thoughts on this episode. Share your thoughts on this topic as well. We always appreciate your insight and more. With that said, Sarah, uh, Tim Patrick, like I said, it wasn't just Tim Patrick who went to Instagram yesterday. It was Cortland Sutton who went to Instagram as well after Sean Payton came out and said what he said. Tim Patrick kind of put it together, and it was a you know really cool picture, by the way, of all, all four of those guys, and said, hey, the last dance, what does that mean, and who could it indicate? Right. For those who maybe didn't watch the last dance, I believe that was early on during the pandemic, wasn't it, Cody? If memory serves, it was almost, almost been three years at this point since the last dance documentary came out. Actually, just as a quick little uh, trip down memory lane, not that we really want to revisit that time, but I remember the last dance being like the only thing that was like going on in terms of like sports. There was really nothing happening. And all of a sudden that documentary kind of came out and galvanized a bunch of sports fans documentary about the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan's final year with the team, Phil Jackson's final year with the team. They really, the the team had decided, right? The higher ups in the team, that's the story, is that they decided that this team was going to get blown up after the year. They were saying, this is your last season together. And the team dubbed it the last dance with each other. And they went out and won a championship. And so it was like, it was a win, you know, in that regard. But it kind of sent my Chicago Bulls, Cody, into a tailspin of what, I don't know, coming in on 30 years of, you know, just sadness and, and sorrow. So I think that definitely we don't want that to be the case for the Denver Broncos here. But what Tim Patrick is getting at by posting a picture, we saw Devontae Adams do a similar thing with he and Aaron Rodgers last year. What Tim Patrick is doing here is he's showing us, hey, me, Cortland, Jerry, KJ, this is probably going to be the last year we're all together on this team so let's uh, you know I, i'm not gonna say let's ride cody we'll let somebody else do that for <laughs> me but I, I mean let's see what happens i guess this coming year i think it's important right and you and i we've been kind of banging this drum here i, I wish we've had the opportunity right we've mentioned so many times how we wish we got to see a, a fully healthy bradley chubb vic and uh, von miller with vic fangio we never got to see that we we've never gotten to see Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, KJ Hamler, all healthy at the same time together, right? We've seen different combinations of those guys all mixed in and having the chance to kind of compete with each other. And it's exciting to see the prospects of what could be, but it's just, we're always sitting here wondering like, what if, what if all of them were fully healthy and ready to rock and roll for a season? That to me, I think is important. You know, it's been so unfortunate that each of these guys, for the most part, has sustained a serious injury you know, in one of these seasons, you know, going back to 2020, Cortland with the ACL, 2021, Jerry Judy with the ankle in week one. A couple weeks later, you lose KJ Hamler to the ACL and then to the hip injury. And then last year, Tim Patrick was a big blow. And then there were different games last year. You know, you had Jerry for a you know short stint that was out. Cortland missed a couple of games due to an injury that he had. And it's just like, man, that just stinks. Like Denver just has had the worst luck with injuries. And, you know, credit to the Walton Penner family ownership group. They have really come out and they have made some widespread changes. Obviously, Bo Lowry coming in, being the VP of player health and performance is going to change a lot of things because they weren't happy with the amount of soft tissue injuries. And, and Sean Payton even said it as well in an interview with our good friend Phil Milani had said, you know, we got to get start. It's going to be in the weight room. We have to, to do more. We have to get stronger in the weight room. That's going to prevent injuries. We've had too many injuries in the past few seasons. So I like that he's highlighting these things. Sean Payton knows what's going on. He knows what he wants to do. And it, it's this collaborative effort inside the Broncos organization to get things going. And I tell you what, if Denver can stay healthy, I, I do think we will see a much better team, a, a much more consistent team. And I hate to sound like I'm beating a dead horse here, sir, but it is so hard to ever find continuity or rhythm, you know, whether it's offense or defense, when you have guys, key guys who are injured and out of the lineup. It, it's hard, and this is it. Like You have to hope that this is the year where the Broncos go, and then they throw in a guy like Marquez Callaway to the mix as well, who is going to be an impact player for them. He may not be the, the premier guy in terms of that, but he may be a guy that steps up and comes up big in big-time moments when the Broncos' offense needs it. Uh, yeah, I mean, how are you feeling about this, too? Because it's like when you look at it, if this is the last dance for you know this wide receiver group, who is the most likely to be gone in 2024? 
I kind of feel, Cody, like, you know, the guy who made the post, Tim Patrick, his his contract was structured as such to be basically when he signed it, right? It was a three-year extension, right? So he's it'll be the final year of that contract extension after the season. So really, you look at that, that's where teams give themselves the most headroom in terms of a low dead cap number and high cap savings potentially. So given his age and cap number, things like that, it could be Tim. KJ Hamler, I think, is probably the most obvious selection there because you look at his situation right now with the pectoral injury, which, man, I mean, that poor guy, he cannot catch a break right now. It's It sucks to see a feel for KJ Hamler of all he's been through, especially after, you know, that 2021 injury that he came back from bordering on the miraculous, you know, where we saw him in the workouts around this time last year with Russ. And we're like, is that KJ Hamler? <laughs> you know, like he, he made a miraculous recovery. Uh, you love to see that. I, I hope, you know, for the Broncos sake, it's not – Jerry Judy or Cortland Sutton next year. I feel like those two guys are really building blocks, but we'll see what happens in the NFL draft, right? I don't think this takes the Broncos out of the mix of NFL draft guys either. For for some people, it may seem like, okay, we're, we're bringing back Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy. You got Marquez Callaway in the mix now, little Jordan Humphreys in the fray. You know, we got everything we need. It's like, no, 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 no. You, you you have to look a year beyond this year because wide receiver, those guys, they take time to develop. You need to bring in at least one or two guys, in my opinion, Cody, to really, I mean, maybe supplant KJ this year. I don't know what his situation is going to be. Four to six month recovery timeline could put him out until early to mid-September. So uh, we just don't know. We don't know enough. We don't know how Tim Patrick's going to be coming off the ACL. We don't know what it's going to be like in terms of like you just you just dropped that idea, the, the trade deadline. What is that going to be like? For the Denver Broncos, very similar situation right now to where the Broncos were at when they had, remember, Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders. You had those guys at the top, and not a lot of people saw that need for the wide receiver position in the immediate. But then the Broncos went and they drafted Sutton. They drafted Deshaun Hamilton. They made those investments. I think it's a similar situation right now to what Tim Patrick is saying, that last dance type of mentality. You better believe the front office is going to be taking that mentality as well into the NFL draft. We'll see how things pan out here for the Broncos, but things could be changing. Things could be elevating as well for the Broncos offense. We'll see how things pan out for this wide receiver group in 2023. Speaking of the Broncos and the front office, there were some interesting rumors that were created in a media session by a guy who used to work for the NFL Network regarding Sean Payton and George Payton. What does that mean? We're going to dive deeper into that on today's episode of the show. This episode is brought to you by our friends over there at Built Bar. And the Built March Madness bracket is here. And we know that you have a favorite bar or puff. And now is your time to make it count. Go to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites. And when you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you'll be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky locked-on listeners will get a free box of Built. Not only that, but one lucky locked-on fan will win a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built Bar's best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to their door. Step And what makes Built Bars and Puffs so good? Well, they're high in protein, low in sugar, covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. So run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March, so hop in and support your pick. Could there be a shakeup in the Broncos' front office before or after the NFL draft? That's something that someone who used to work for the NFL Network threw out there and it's very interesting considering some of the conversation. Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. Let's get into this because uh, Michael Lombardi, I've, I've had the privilege of hopping on one of his shows on Sirius XM. He, you know, he's done interviews. He used to work for the NFL Network. How in touch is he? Because you brought this up to me. I had never heard about this until yesterday, but you brought it up to me. You sent me the link to the interview there. He had some very interesting things to say about the Broncos front office, George Payton and Sean Payton. He really did, Cody. And I got sent this by uh, a friend of ours, Jordan, who is most excited about the Jerry Judy update that we got on Sunday more than anybody that I know personally. But he sent this to me because Michael Lombardi was talking about a few different things. He's talking about the Jerry Judy trade idea. He's talking about Cortland Sutton. He's kind of I mean, he's speaking in this interview very matter-of-factly. If you want to find this interview, it's a DraftKings podcast. Michael Lombardi 
and he starts talking about the Broncos around the 25 minute mark of this video. But one of the most interesting things that he brought up is something that I think is worth at least discussing. He talked about after the NFL draft, he thinks that there could be a shakeup in the front office for the Denver Broncos in terms of like a big shakeup, like general manager George Payton either being let go or stepping down or something like that happening after the NFL draft. And there, these rumors have been going on since, remember when Sean Payton was in the interview process, Cody, a lot of people are like, well, the Arizona Cardinals make the most sense. They don't have a GM. Sean Payton could go in and be the head coach and GM. And then all of a sudden we hear Sean Payton talking to the public and he's like, I have no idea where these rumors about me being like this, you know, I, I'm in this heavy handed, you know, just like, I'm not that guy. I'm not the guy who's going to come in and be the head coach GM. Although we do know he has pretty significant say over personnel. I don't know. It's, it's an interesting idea. It's an interesting thought. You and I were talking about this off the air on Sunday. What are your thoughts on a, big time shakeup like this happening does it seem like based on your interactions day to day at the facility and the people that you know does it seem like this kind of power struggle is coming to a head here as we approach the nfl draft no it doesn't like to be honest with you when i heard it i was shocked i was like wait a minute like is this just like i, I thought that the guy i thought lombardi was just speculating because and we've even heard sean payton sean payton even came out yesterday you know in an interview with phil milani and talked about george and how great the relationship has been working with him I, that doesn't sound like the type of guy that Sean Payton is. And look, even in his tenure with the New Orleans Saints, he was never the GM. Like, he worked with Mickey Loomis. Mickey Loomis was the GM. Mickey Loomis is doing all the things in terms of assembling the roster in collaboration with Payton as the coach in terms of what do you need in order to succeed. To me, if that were to happen, if the Broncos were to shake things up, it just doesn't make sense. Why hold, if you're going to shake something up, why not do that when you were making widespread changes with when you fired Nathaniel Hackett? Why not do that once the season was officially over? To me, I, I just don't see there any, being any ground to that. I think it would be very shocking if something like that were to happen. But just my interactions and knowing like what Sean Payton has said, doesn't seem like that's the type of guy that Sean Payton is. And Sean Payton's not going to do anybody dirty. These guys, literally, like I said, from people I've spoken to inside the building, Sean Payton, George Payton, these guys have been hand-in-hand hand since he came in on day one as the Broncos head coach. They're invested on building a roster that can compete. They want to win games, and they want to do it together. Like They have a great kind of collaboration. They have a lot of emphasis on player development, roster construction. This is where these two guys have a lot of similar experience. And obviously, I think Sean Payton values George Payton's insight as a former scout, someone who's been around the game for so long I mean they have ties that they've mentioned as well so to me when I heard this I was like no way like Michael Lombardi is 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 lost in the sauce or something you know saying things like this I just don't see it happening I would be floored if that were the case because then that would tell me that the Broncos have some bigger issues at hand if they were to do something like this considering where they are at and where they are trying to go in keeping with this last dance theme what do you what do you think maybe okay so here, here I'm going to throw this out there. This is just a off the top of my head thing. This wasn't in our show script or anything, Cody, but I'm kind of interested to, to by this thought here as you were just talking right there. What if George Payton is kind of tied? I mean, we I know I've said this is not the case necessarily before, but what if maybe George Payton, his fate after this season is kind of directly tied to whatever happens to Russell Wilson? I don't think that's like a earth shattering idea or concept. Well, let's say, you know, Russ does great. Russ has a great bounce back season. I think you keep the band together, right? You try to keep as much of the band together as possible and keep working towards a championship. You know, assuming we don't go 17 and 0, like we're 17 and 0 until we ain't, baby, and win that Super Bowl this year. But assuming that doesn't happen, you keep the band together as you're continually improving. But if, if things do go south with Russ, let's say, worst case scenario, you have to cut him or try to trade him for something like offset the salary or whatever. Let's say that kind of worst case scenario does happen. Maybe in that instance, you could say, Hey, we're going to, we're going to part ways with George. We're going to bring in a GM that kind of, you know, we work with Sean Payton to select. I think that kind of makes a lot more sense to me than it does to say, Hey, George, after this NFL draft, you're going to be looking for a job, right? I don't think that's necessarily a great idea, but, I, I mean, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that potential scenario? Maybe George Payton's fate being decided along with Russell Wilson's after this year. 
I think there is a tie right there, right? That's certainly possible because George is the one who executed the trade. And as we all know, like based on the first year, it hasn't worked out. Like the Broncos, it makes it seem like the Broncos absolutely got fleeced on the trade in that situation. But as you and I have discussed so many times, I refuse to believe just being around the game of football as a former player and as a former coach, I refuse to believe and seeing Russ every day, I refuse to believe that that is who Russell Wilson is, was what we saw last year. Last year seemed was just one of the oddest years of football that I've ever witnessed in my life, to be honest with you, Sarah. And just knowing the type of guy that Russell Wilson is, the type of work ethic that he has, and with a coach in place now that I think will kind of set the tone and will say, hey, this is the standard and nobody's above it, I think it'll benefit Russell Wilson. I, I just I think we'll see a much more improved him, and can we see an even better Russell Wilson than what we saw last year. To me, that's going to be huge. And can the Broncos win games because of Russell Wilson? That's going to be huge as well. So anything is possible, Sarah, at this point in time. As you and I know, the world of sports, the world of the NFL is wild. It's unpredictable in nature. But the one thing that you can get every single day is a Lockdown Broncos podcast breaking down the latest news in Dove Valley. What's going on from an objective point of view make sure you subscribe or you follow for free on youtube or your favorite podcasting provider so you never miss out on an episode the moment it is made available sarah bettinger and myself will be back tomorrow as we discuss maybe some of the comments sean payton has said at the nfl owners meeting when he meets with the media you'll get that and much more on tomorrow's brand new episode locked on broncos